On BBC Radio Wales, I'm Ben Azaka, keeping you company until five o'clock. And it is time to step into our virtual kitchen for midweek menu. Every Wednesday, the best chefs in Wales share their recipes with us, bringing some inspiration to your dinner plates. This week, Lisa Fern from the Pumpkin Patch Kitchen and Garden at a shed in Carmarthen is here. Good afternoon, Lisa. How are you? I'm very well, Venas. How are you? Yeah, I'm good as well. I, I'm in a good mood today. Most Brilliant. days I am, but extra, extra good. Um, you've been pretty busy though, haven't you? I think you were uh, teaching this morning, weren't you? I was. I was teaching at Pembrokeshire College, all virtual, of course, at the moment. Uh, so we had a, a sort of a, a three-hour Zoom sort of lecture stroke tutorial cook along, uh, introducing new students to what Kittering College would be like. So that was quite exciting and, and fun. Yeah. So I, how are you finding doing all that online? I'm getting used to it. I've had to get used to it. It's been a, it's been a, a weird year. We all know that. But um, of course, for somebody who's used to teaching cookery, um, it's, a, it's a really strange one because everybody wants to do more cooking. Everybody has to do more cooking because we've been home and eating three times yeah. a day, you know, from our own kitchens. Yeah. Um, and yet I can't teach. So I've done lots of uh, cook-alongs and Zooms and tried to make a few little videos of my own at home on my phone and put them out there. I think we needed inspiration didn't yeah. we, for new ideas. And the best part is, you know, if you're you're home in your own kitchen and you're doing it with a master like yourself. It's kind of in your own little comfortable bubble. You don't need to go anywhere. You don't need to be in a new environment. Although we will do that in the future, I'm sure. But it's just a nice change. Um, you've shared some cookery tips as well on Zoom last week, didn't you, for a festival? Um, oh, remind me, which festival was it? Oh, was this was the Rata 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 Festival? Rata 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 yes. Town <laughs> Festival 2021. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That, that's right. I think I was booked for, 19, for 2020, actually. And of course, that didn't happen. So this year, I think we, we're all so, you know, we're so good with Zoom and Teams and all these these days. Uh, and I've been teaching loads of kids and, and sort of older generations and everybody knows how to mute themselves and put them off mute. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was a good one. That was lovely. We had, oh, I can't remember how many people now, but um, we did uh, a few sort of veg- vegetarian recipes actually that night using spring vegetables and showing some ideas and, and inspiration of what you can do this a little bit more out of the ordinary maybe. Do you know, vegetables is the bit, I, I, I'm good with meat because I've always cooked with meat, but you know, mm. making vegetables taste good. I'm really looking forward to your recipes today actually just to be able to do things a bit more in a vegetarian mode at home which will be lovely tell me tell me how is your cookery school going at the moment it's going really well. We reopened, I'm trying to work it out, Monday Monday evening for our sort of teens academy. Um, and then we've got another workshop tomorrow night and Saturday. And so, we, yeah, we're gradually now getting back into it, trying to, you know, put slot people in to workshops that were, of course, booked for January, which then had to be stopped. And so um, we're sort of on a bit of a catch up at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really exciting. And on, 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 as well as that, we've got a few cafes that have, that have opened during lockdown. So yeah. that's keeping us busy and sort of a bit of a distraction. Good, good. I'm so glad. But it is National Vegetarian Week this week and one of the aims for us is to start replacing meat with vegetarian sources of protein a little bit more often than we we would do. How often do you do something like that yourself or in your cafes? Well, I've always loved salad, but I'm not talking lettuce, tomato and cucumber. I love those yeah. interesting salads with spices yeah. and maybe toasted nuts and things like that in them, you know. Um, so I, I cook like that very regularly. Uh, I've got a vegetarian son and a vegetarian daughter. So when they're home, um, I'm forced to even, you know, practice those those recipes a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but it's something I do enjoy um, experimenting with. As somebody who grows a lot of vegetables, um, it's great to find new ways of cooking them and what, you know, what works well with them. And I think cuisine Cuisines from other parts of the world are, are quite exciting, and they sort of they, they offer flavour combinations that we're not so familiar with in this country. We like to yeah. boil everything, don't we? <laughs> yeah. So a bit of a bit of a Lebanese vibe today, Middle Eastern vibe. What have you got yeah. in, in your recipe for us today? Yeah, well, I thought we'd go with flatbreads or pitta breads, whatever you want, or as an open salad, like a like a Buddha bowl, um, but with flaffle and hummus, and then maybe ways of changing your normal hummus, which is just a chickpea, tahini based um, dip, I guess, a creamy dip, adding maybe roasted beetroot to make it more interesting in colour and alternating the beans and, you know, what, what, what to add to add different flavours to it. Um, and it just looks so exciting on the plate when you've got so many colours going on. And, uh, and then just a simple pickle, maybe with um, some red cabbage 
cabbage and red onion, yeah. um, you know, and just, yeah, just all those. It's, it's nice. We've got a lot of different flavors on the plate and you get, you know, it's, it's so exciting to dip into the next mouthful. I love falafel, but I've never actually made it myself. I always get it out and about or in other countries. So we're making that from yeah. scratch, aren't we? We are, we are definitely. And, and for pudding, we've got the um, flapjacks as well. Yeah, some nice seeded flapjacks with maybe Lovely. some dried fruit in there. Nice chewy thing to finish mm, on. Sounds delicious. Well, if you'd like Lisa's recipes, drop me an email. The email address is benaz, that's spelled B-E-H-N-A-Z at bbc.co.uk. And we'll have more from Lisa after Irene Cara. But first this. It's time to sit down and make a note of today's recipe. Actually, don't make a note. Just listen and we'll send you an email. Yes, you're listening to Ben Az on BBC Radio Wales. Lisa Fern is about to share her falafel and roast beetroot hummus pita recipe with us. So, Lisa, we're making the roast beetroot hummus first, aren't we? Oh, we can do, or we can do the falafel. I, I don't mind. We'll you start with the hummus then. Yeah, yeah. No, no, <laughs> go, go whichever way you want, whatever you're prepared to do oh, first. Hummus. Um, I would, first of all, uh, it's good to source some good, nice beetroot. Um, you can use the shop bought, um, you know, ready cooked beetroot, um, but it's always a little bit watery um, mm. and it makes the whole hummus watery. So what I would tend to do is go and buy some actual beetroot mm. um, and then just give them a good scrub. Don't take the root off and don't take all of the shoot off because you don't want them to um, to lose any moisture. Or if you're going to boil them, you still leave it on because you don't want them to bleed into the water. I never knew that. I colour. always cut them off. Do you? You know, yeah. you can take some of the greenery off, but leave yeah. a good little stub because that just keeps the beetroot inside intact. So oh. if you boil or roast, the flavour and the moisture stays inside the beetroot. That's a good tip. Um, yeah, it, and I love roast beetroot. So mm. I, I would recommend roasting, but it does take a little bit longer. I would then just pop them on a, on a baking tray and cover them with some foil, or you can just wrap each individual one in some foil, if you like, and pop them in the oven um, for up to about an hour until you can um, put a, a skewer or a sharp knife through and, and it's just soft. Okay. Um, but you could boil them. They'll boil in about, um, I don't know, 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the size of them. Um, and then comes the best part of all, peeling yeah. them. Oh my gosh, I love peeling beetroot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really suggest a good pair of gloves, however, because it stains, the, oh it? my gosh, it does it does stain, it mm. does stain. Um, so yeah, pop, pop, pop on your marigolds or your your sort of uh, your blue kitchen gloves, and um, and you just literally just just peel away, um, just using your hands and fingers, the, the skin and it comes away beautifully. And then you can just ch- coarsely chop them, c- quarter them, whatever, and pop them in a food processor. Yeah. Um, now you don't have to have a food processor. You could grate the beetroot if you haven't got a processor. If you, you'll have to be very good at chopping, um, fine chopping and slicing, um, but you can grate the beetroot and that will make it nice and fine to go into your hummus. Um, and then um, the classic chickpeas, um, wonderful chickpeas. I adore them in all sorts of ways. Um, so I go for one 400 gram tin of chickpeas and I would drain them. And then you just add those into the food processor alongside the beetroot. And then it gets a little bit more exciting. This is where you can uh, add some garlic. Now, again, um, normal sort of raw garlic is fine. But if you want something a little bit more super duper and a little bit more sweetness, if you roast the garlic first by Mm. popping the whole clove, uh, not the whole clove, sorry, the whole bulb in some foil, I often add just a little drizzle of olive oil. I'm not sure why I do that, but I do. And then just scrunch up the foil and pop it in the oven for about 20, 25 minutes. And then you can, the, the, the garlic becomes comes cooked and um, you can just squeeze it out of the indi- individual cloves and it just adds yeah. oh, another lovely um, flavour. Amazing. And then we so add a bit of salt. A little bit of salt. Lemon. Don't forget salt. Yeah, the salt is, it, it, obviously you need salt in most things. A little bit of lemon, just lift this a little bit. And then tahini, something a little bit mm. more unusual to lots of people maybe. But it, think of it as a, a nut um, a nut butter or like a peanut butter, but it's yeah. sesame seeds. So it's sesame seeds ground up finely um, and it creates a lovely creamy um, paste, which you add and that makes it ultra creamy. Mm. And then you just blend that all together. Because we've added the beetroot you don't necessarily need to add cumin because the beetroot is going to flavor it um, but if you do like that cumin and I love cumin I add a teaspoonful of cumin at this point um, either ground or you can add the, the seeds um, I don't mind the food, uh, cumin seeds in my hummus and then you just blitz it until it's as fine as you like it oh. some people like it a little coarse how yes, do you like I like it, I like it creamy 
Do you? Yeah. So you keep on going keep and going. just leave it going yeah, until it's absolutely totally smooth. Um, and that's it. And I then pop it in it. the fridge and go on to your falafel. Yes, I pop it in a dish and then I would oh, actually, before serving, I would tend to put a little bit of olive, olive oil, oil over the top again, a good yeah. quality virgin olive oil and maybe a sprinkling of paprika if you like a little oh, bit of a yes. hit. Yes, yes, yes. A little yes, bit yes. of heat. Mm. Um, and that's great in the fridge then for a good four days and it's great to dip into, you know, whenever. So make, make a like, nice amount to maybe use it for other days with dips and things like that. Yeah. Fantastic. Perfect lunch. Yep. And then what um, happens with the falafel? How do we make that? Well, they are really, really similar, but we forget the beetroot we're just going in this time with a chin of tic- uh, chin a tin of chickpeas uh, drained again and a, a couple of cloves of garlic i'd go a little bit more heavier on the garlic for this again roasted if you fancy two teaspoonfuls of cumin this time because we're going to cook these and I think you need the extra cumin to come through, the flavour to come through because you're cooking them. Yeah. And what sets them apart, um, these two things, a handful, if you can, of fresh coriander. Oh, it makes such a difference to have fresh herbs. Yeah. Um, so if you can get hold of a handful of coriander, throw those in and um, some plain flour. Now, normal plain flour, it helps it to bind, but if you are gluten-free, go for gram flour, which again is a chickpea flour. Um, so I know we're going heavy on the chickpeas here, but it, it does then keep it gluten free for you if that's important. It's so good for you. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. 19 grams of um, protein per 100 grams in a chickpeas. Wow. So, you know, that that's high. That, I mean, it's not quite as high as most meats, but it is high for a plant-based food. Um, and then if you like, again, as I said earlier, for the, um, the hummus, a little bit of, of um, heat, put in a little, one of your spice blends, something like carissa or rasala nut or just something, um, even a, a touch of curry powder if you want to, just something that gives it a little bit of a, a kick. And then you make those into a, uh, blitz it in the, in the food processor and then make it into little balls. Right. Now, an ice cream scoop is great for this. Ah. So you take your scoop and then you roll it in your hands. Um, if it's a little bit wet, put a little bit of gram flour or normal flour on your hands and roll them. And then you can deep fry them or you could oven, oven bake them. Yeah, I was going to ask you, how does it work out in the oven? Does it come out all right? They they can dry out a little bit. So if you're yeah. going to do that, I would I would tend to either brush them with a little bit of olive oil or mm. drizzle a little of oil over the top. And I would turn them halfway through just right. to, so, so they get an even sort of um, colour. You don't want to colour them too much. And everything in there, of course, is perfectly fine to eat before going in the oven. Of course. Um, it's just to crisp it up a little bit on the outside. Yes. Um, but they are delicious. So fry them, put them in the oven, bring them out, and then you make it as a sandwich to serve? Yeah, I would. I'd get a pita bread or a flat bread, uh, or you can just leave out the carbs altogether and you just put a bit of hummus on the bottom, um, or maybe some salad leaves on the bottom, some hummus, and then three or four of the falafel. And um, you can then uh, add a pickle, an easy pickle, just to heat up a, a cup full of red wine vinegar, add a teaspoon of sugar and half a teaspoon of salt, and then pour it over some really finely sliced red onion and red cabbage. And the, the, the vinegar and the heat will just gently sort of um, pickle them very, very quickly uh, and that's a perfect little accompaniment on top which again mm. adds a little bit of colour as well. <gasps> I am so hungry now Lisa. That, that <laughs> sounds del- I'm going to have a go at making this one actually. I absolutely love the recipe. Thank you very much. Stay where you are. We'll hear another recipe after a travel update. Times on BBC Radio Wales and Lisa Fern is sharing her recipes with us. We've already heard how to create her falafel and roast beetroot hummus pitta. Now it's time for her fantastic flapjacks. Can I tell you something, Lisa? Go on. Very often I come into work, I'm, I'm on the first floor, I go up to the fourth floor, get a flapjack, come down here and I'm always nibbling on flapjacks in between tracks. <laughs> so now I can make my own thanks to you. So take it away. What's the first step? Well, to start with, there's nothing better to nibble on than a flapjack um, because they're sweet, aren't they? But they are also nutritious. I'm mm. not saying they are healthy necessarily because they do contain sugar and honey or syrup, etc. and butter, but they do have that slow release um, property because it contains oats, yes. um, the porridge oats, and, and, and they're really, really good for us. Um, so to start with, um, I would, um, I'd pop the oven on to start with, 180 degrees ready because it doesn't take long to make these, which is another bonus. I love foods that are fast, yes. um, you know, and trouble free and not a lot of washing up yeah. because oh. you don't need a 
you don't need much for this at all. Um, so into a saucepan, you can weigh out. You, in fact, when you start weighing, don't use a bowl, pop your saucepan on top of your weighing scales. I always do that. I thought I was the only one. And then you reset, <laughs> don't you, every time. It's exactly. brilliant. Uh, it saves so much washing up. Yes. Um, so first of all, put your, your saucepan on the scales. I, a non-stick helps. I, I feel it all comes away from the pan so much easier if it's non-stick. But if it's not, don't worry about it. Um, so to start with, you need butter. Um, so 175 grams of butter, which I know sounds a lot, but we're going to make quite a good batch of lapjacks. Um, and into that, we're going to add uh, the syrup and the sugar. So um, 55 grams of syrup. If you don't want to use syrup or you want to use maybe your own honey or local honey, that's fine. They're interchangeable. And if you haven't got either, you can always put some maple syrup in, you know, mm. instead of. So, so that's fine. Something sweet and runny, basically, is what we want. Uh, so 55 grams of the honey and then 125 grams of soft brown sugar. If you don't have brown sugar, you can use white sugar. But I do feel it adds a little bit more depth of flavour using the browns, a little bit more molassesy. Do you know mm. what I mean? Um, and also, to be honest, anything that's slightly less refined, so if it's brown, it's less refined than white, um, it has more goodness in it. The yes. nutritional value is higher. So let's go for the brown sugar. Um, and then pop it over low heat for two to three minutes and just stir regularly. Just keep, you know, just chill and enjoy the moment and stir until everything is melted. Yeah. And you've got a lovely sticky mess in your pan. Um, then into another bowl. Um, however, you don't have to. If you're very confident, you could put the same saucepan on the scales, but it is hot by now. So maybe another bowl is, is ideal. Yeah. Weigh out your porridge oats. So you need approximately um, 280 grams of porridge oats. And I tend to go for the chunky ones. Um, you can get sort of giant rolled porridge oats and they create a bit more of a texture. Mm. Um, some of the porridge oats, if they're ground too finely, there's a lot of dust in there. It's not bad, but it doesn't create as, as good a structure in your flapjack. So go for nice big porridge oats okay. um, and then um, then it's up to you you can just leave it at that but I love to go a little bit more um, seeds are so good for us so I'll often throw in maybe some sunflower seeds so a combination up to around 70 grams of maybe sunflower seeds or poppy seeds yes. um, uh, pumpkin seeds oh I love pumpkin mm. seeds and they look so pretty in it as well um, you can use flax seeds which are mint seeds or, you know any of these seeds are so nutritional uh, high nutrition so add a little bit of those and then something a little bit more chewy so maybe some chopped apricots um, but chop them into small pieces using a knife and a chopping board uh, you know so that they create yeah. little flecks all the way through rather than have one big or two big lumps yeah. um, but some dates would be fine um, uh, maybe some chopped mango if you wanted to oh. any of the sticky um, st dried fruits yes. even currants and sultanas would work as well but don't go overboard okay. because you don't want it to dry out too much because what we're going to do now is tip it into a what I call a brownie tin maybe a 20 centimeter square tin with a sort of a, a five centimeter edge so you know you want to you want a little bit of depth in the tin line it I would with with some grease proof paper and then tip it in and pat it down with the back of the spoon. Okay. If you find it all sticks to the back of the spoon, wet the spoon in some cold water and then pat it down and it'll stop the, the oats from coming up on the spoon every time you pat it down. Uh, and then just bake it in the oven for about 25 minutes until it's just golden. It won't be hard and crunchy at this point. Um, and in fact, we don't want it to go too crunchy anyway, but take it out after about 25 minutes, um, leave it in the tin, but mark out where you want to cut eventually. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to make it into nine, cut it down the middle and then cut some, you know, slices across. Um, don't go all the way through. Just, just, you know, just press down gently with a spatula or something just to mark where you're going to mark, where you're going to cut. Because as it, as it cools, it crisps a little. And then when you go eventually to put a sharp knife through to cut, they can just shatter everywhere and you don't right. want that to happen. Okay. So when you take it out, you can then follow the same guidelines that you've, you've already put in the, the flapjack and cut along. And there you have it. Easy peasy. I love it because it's so simple. It's my favourite. It's kind of healthy once we get the seeds in. And what I normally yes. do, I, I probably normally just put in less sugar than what the recipe says. And then I feel yeah. a little bit better about it. So. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds beautiful. And how long would that keep for? 
Oh, that'll keep sort of for, for good four or five days in an four airtight container. Yep. Sort it. If you're very naughty, you can even drizzle some chocolate on top. <laughs> <laughs> now you're pushing it, Lisa. Oh, sounds lovely. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And we'll speak again soon, I'm sure. And if you'd like Lisa's recipes, drop us an email. The email address is Benaz. That's spelled B-E-H. A new stand-up comedy special. At bbc.co.uk. Sorry, I didn't mean to play that then. Uh, so yes, the email is Benaz at bbc.co.uk.